I train as a blacksmith. Most of my forging skill is a very traditional hammer and anvil. My making process is very repetitive and painstaking. I find the repetition very meditative. When I was little, biology study was my favourite subject. And one day, my biology teacher gave me the lesson how to use the microscope. And then microscope was uh, excellent because uh, you could see a tiny creature dividing itself. And then that was the origin of my concept. My name is Jun Komori from Yokohama, Japan. I live in this little part of uh, North Wales called Penkling. Here is a very simple in a way, but it's made influence in my work. I studied in Tokyo. I took metal work as a major subject. It was a very short period, if you think about it. It's only two and a half years concentrate on metal work. Most of the projects was the kind of first couple of years. You've been given the brief. So you make cut, you make stunts, chair or something like that. On the third year, I've been received first time like a free brief. Do whatever you want. I start cutting lots box section. You know, the pipe, steel pipe, but box section. I just chopped a lot and then I decide to weld it together without thinking, without design. That was the very first time I tried. So that result was something I just never thought. And that's the thing, I just got it. That's the, my core of concept since uncontrollable beauty. I didn't feel professional, like I didn't feel like a, a, I could carry out as a professional. So I took job in the welding factory. I became one of the seven man team and then I worked nine to five. It's just ordinary job. There's so many welding methods, the gas welding, TIG welding, MIG welding. These uh, lots of different metal you have to practice what to weld. So everything practical knowledge about welding and fabricating is from that experience and nothing arty, nothing whatsoever. Mori Junko's art is fascinating because I think it takes the best of Japan and the best of Europe, combines them together. There is really no one quite like her. Oh, Junko's out there on her own in terms of style but she's absolutely out there, as good as it gets. With other artists, they just do different things. Everything Junko makes is composed of many, many, many pieces brought together in vast quantities sometimes, and then she spends huge amounts of time and skill bringing it together, building up the object, and just sort of honest, robust bashing of metal. And what I feel about her, specifically witnessed through this piece that we have, which is spectacular, it's large, it's one of her larger pieces, and I think maybe her most ambitious, I'd like to say it's her best piece. I can see that what she does is she's going from strength to strength and is taking on new challenges. We now have objects made in silver that are just so heavy, and objects in steel that are so big, and that massive quantity of elements forming an object that I find brilliant. I got vast range of uh, hammers here. I go to Kabutsu, then buy rusty old hammers and then clean them and then texture the heads by angle grinder. 80% more than that maybe. Process is uh, making components. Lots of people mention my making process is repetitive and painstaking. I don't even question about repetitive process. Repetition, boring, that kind of notion isn't exist, doesn't exist to me. I find the repetitions very meditative. I used to forge, obviously, 100% of my, by myself. At the moment, 90% more than 90%, I must say. The com components making is done by assistants. Then welding is 100% done by me because the nature of a shape forming process is, uh, it's almost, I'm the 
only one can control that. I feel that Mori Junko is one of those artists that is exceptional, is very much her own person. What she's done is incorporated the best of Japan, the best of technique, finish, detail, with the idea of the overall picture that often is emphasized in Europe, and wedded the two together. And what we have is a piece that is perfect, really. The first time I saw it, actually I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. First time I saw it, I thought, wow, never seen anything like that before. And then the British Museum jumped in immediately and said, we're having that. And I'm really proud because it's different. There has been nothing like it before. Every time I make objects, I often surprise myself, something born in front of me. And then I think my work is a pretty good look in, in this context. I'm very surprised about that. It's really rare. And British Museum is the British Museum. It's one-off and it's extremely famous. I'm, when I told my parents, they said, what? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And then like, it's rare to see contemporary stuff in the museum. So it's very amazing and quite brave of them. To be able to display what I believe is Junko's best work means an incredible amount to me. It means that we have really taken the best of contemporary Japanese expression through metal and are able to display it within this whole range of 20,000 years of Japanese art history. And uh, I can't tell you how satisfying that is. You don't pick up coral, beautiful coral in the beach saying, oh, this is because of this and that. You don't even question or analyze like uh, most of contemporary art. Yeah, I want people to stop thinking too much. <laughs> I don't, I really wish even British Museum don't have any tag or title on it. Where, who made or when made it's made. Beauty is in the oddness. I, that's what I believe because it's odd. It's an unusual, it shouldn't be there, but people draw into the, you know, the cat caught their eye and then they start imagining the story by themselves. That's art itself, the process of artistic thinking.